Hey YouTube, it is your girl Dr. J and I am finally here with the update I have been promising y'all for way too long. So I am going to be tackling some of the most common questions I have received about where we are and what we're doing. So the number one question that I've gotten is, are you all still homeschooling? And the answer is emphatically yes. All three kids are still homeschooling. We're actually going to be going into our ninth year of homeschooling in the fall. The second question I get is just asking like a general update with the kids. So I will let you guys know that Speedster is going into his second year of high school. If you guys have been following our journey, you know that Speedster should have done eighth grade last year but he decided to go ahead and skip eighth grade. It wasn't a problem because everything that I had already planned for him to take was going to be able to go on his high school transcript. So it was really just a matter of changing how he was registered as a homeschooler in our state. The reason for that change was he is on a, an FRC robotics team. And in order to compete on the floor in live competitions, you have to be a high schooler. And he was promoted to a driver on his robotics team. And so he wanted to be able to compete in that role. And so he did his grade skip. And it ended up being a great decision because his robotics team ended up going all the way to world competition. We were uh, assigned to Houston, and that was really a, a life-changing experience for him. It was great for our entire family. Everybody went down to watch the competition, and if you ever get a chance to see a full-scale robotics competition, I would say take it because it is fascinating. So that's what he did. The twins are actually going into the seventh grade, so... Yes, everybody is, is, is doing great. The next question I get a lot uh, is, are we still STEM-based? And again, that answer is yes. We are still a STEM-based homeschool. How that looks has changed uh, quite a bit since my kids were in elementary, because it's been like three years since I've talked to y'all, to now in middle and high school. And so... Basically, how that looks is just that I'm not their primary teacher for most of their classes because they're starting to get very deep into their classes and get into more advanced uh, classes. For instance, this fall, Speedster is going to be going into his math is pre-calculus with trig. And so, no, I'm not his primary teacher for that. The twins are going into algebra one. I'm not their primary teacher for that. So, um, that's that's a big change. Um, another area of being STEM based is that Speedster was he's uh, just finished his first year in a three year high school engineering program. Actually, a wonderful program. At least the first year that we seen it was amazing. Uh, it was designed by a university, and their thing is that if you complete all three years, you will have been introduced to what you would see in your first year or so in a college level engineering program. So if you guys want me to give you an update about that program, give you a review. If you have kids that are interested in going into engineering, just let me know. I'll post a video on that, but it was just phenomenal. The program was just phenomenal. Another way that uh, STEM base is manifest in our homeschool is the kids, their independent research. For instance, all three kids this past year did science fair in the science engineering fair that is held in every state. And so Speedster won first place in the senior division, which is for high school students. He won first place in engineering category, both our regional science fair and our state science fair. He uh, did uh, well with getting you know, small scholarships from uh, organizations. He was asked by an IEEE chapter to come and present his research with them. And he has already started to work on his research plan for this coming year. He knows what he's going to be doing in his engineering-based research for the next three to four years. And that's been really good to help him as he starts to narrow down like colleges that he's interested in. We started to do some 
initial college visits for him. And it was really good that he had already started doing this high school level research because when he's looking at universities, it's not just a matter of how good is their cafeteria food because when you're 13, that is a little bit a legitimate question that you have is how is their food? But he can also talk to some of the department heads and see if the research that they're doing, how does that you know, fit in with some of his plans, his ideas? How do they conduct research? Can you do research as an undergraduate student? It's just really helped him to have a much more meaningful college visit. And it's helped him to really have a better idea of where he might want to go in the future. Faster Fox, she did amazing at Science Fair as well. She won the Junior Grand category, which is like that's for middle school uh, researchers. Um, for our regional and our state competition. Her research was on exoplanets. And not only did she win Junior Grand, but she also was able to, like she was invited by our local planetarium to put together a project to teach um, kids and adults about exoplanets. That's where her research is. She got, you know, invites from like a professor, uh, astronomy professor in the UK to do some planetarium visits. And she's actually had some universities who are like, hey, I like the research that you're doing. Why don't you start looking at us soon when you're thinking about colleges and stuff like that. So it's really helped her to start better understanding what all the areas of planetary sciences and astronomy and astrophysics and you know all that sort of stuff has to offer so that she can start thinking about where she best fits um, at least you know as an 11 year old because you know that could change tomorrow she could be like what I really want to be is you know a graphic artist and we would go with that but she has been on on astronomy since she was four so I don't think she's gonna be changing her mind but just in case you know we, we still had that we will win and for Salamander, his research has been in environmental science and building construction. You guys know he's, he's always been a builder, and he continues that now. And he did amazing at uh, regional and state science fair as well. Qualified for Broadcom Masters, which is the top 10% of middle school scientists. So he is competing at the national level now. They recognize the top 3,000 3, uh, scientists and then... 300 scientists, so uh, 300 um, top 300 uh, middle school scientists in the country. So right now, he and uh, Faster Fox are being considered for that, and he was invited to have his paper that he wrote to go with his science fair project, invited to have that published in an upcoming annual per periodical for the National Geological so Society. So that's really cool at 11 to have your first paper published. So yay for him. So yeah, that, that's really how STEM base looks for us now at the middle and high school level. So it's a little bit different. It's a lot bit different from when we were doing more general stuff and all the kids were really working together and we were you know, going, wow, that's cool, wow, that's fun. And they still do, wow, that's cool, and wow, that's fun. But they are really the ones who guide where their research goes now. And they're starting to branch out and, you know, making a name for themselves at at least the middle school and high school level and on into starting to get some recognition and get some looks from some areas where maybe they might have interest, to, interest in going for their next steps. Uh, another question that I get is, how has our homeschooling changed? And it has definitely changed. A lot of my videos that you see, they focus on how we were homeschooling elementary school and just a little bit of middle school. And things have changed just because my kids have gotten older. I am not their primary teacher for most of their classes. We do a lot of online classes. They do some on-ground classes but my husband and I are more homework helpers for many of their classes now. That's not a bad thing. They are just, that. it's just a part of growth. For instance, Speedster just got accepted into an early college program for State University. Now, a lot of people talk about dual enrollment. I haven't heard a lot of people talk about early college, but the difference is that early college programs, you're more seen as an actual student of that university, and so you generally have the entire catalog of classes available to you as long as you make the prerequisites 
whereas in some dual enrollment programs, you're limited to the classes that you can take. And so with this program, he has a lot more classes available to him, especially since he took the ACT as a seventh grader. He did very well. So he's able to to have a, a wide variety of courses that are available to him that he meets the prerequisites for. He will be sitting for the ACT again in the spring. The twins will be sitting for the ACT the first time as seventh graders as well in the spring. That's just what we do. Uh, my kids are part of Duke TIP and being a part of the Duke TIP program is that you can sit for the either the SAT or the ACT as a seventh grader. The ACT works best for my kids for very, you know, for a number of reasons. So they will be sitting for the ACT um, um, in the spring of 2020. So that's, you know, really how, you know, things have changed um, for how we homeschool. But, you know, the philosophy is, is still the same. The strategy is still the same. It's just, you know, how it's being implemented now that they're older. Another thing that has changed is just how I keep paperwork since I am putting together a high school transcript now and we'll be putting together two more high school transcripts in a couple of years. It was just really important that I'm not you know, spinning my wheels. So I have started to put my paperwork together in a very specific way so that when Speedster starts to do his official college applications and when the twins start theirs, I'm not having to go back and recreate the will because I didn't make good decisions the first time. So I'm trying to make sure that the paperwork just looks good. And that made it, it made a ton of difference for like when he applied for the early college program. I didn't have to go figure out how I was going to write my part as the school administrator. I already, it was easy for me to do my part. And then he just had to, you know, submit his parts. And so I have already seen the benefits of just being very cognizant of how I get put his paperwork put all their put paperwork together and keep things organized in very specific ways and so that has been really good uh, one of the things that i've you know made sure to do is just sit down and learn from people who have been there done that i love talking with people who are at the same place as me who have kids that are you know near my kids ages and we can learn together and grow together and commiserate together and all that kind of fun stuff but I have also seen the importance of doing due diligence and making sure that when you are getting advice for where to go getting that from people who have been there and done that and have had success in the ways that are consistent with where your kids want to go and where your family wants to go. So it's a very different uh, set of advice if your children are interested in one type of trajectory versus another type of trajectory. And for the trajectory that we're going on, I have been able to learn a ton from people who have navigated that specific trajectory very well. And so that's been a big part of it. Another uh, thing that's just changed is just how we are organizing <laughs> um, our day. Uh, I'm gonna, I'll am gonna, i show you guys uh, one of the things. I started using Kanban boards for myself personally, and we are going to implement them for the kids this fall. So I can you know kind of show you guys that when I get their boards together. But they've been good for me because I've been doing a ton. For those who saw the, the first video that I put out last week, it, it was just a video of a Kickstarter. But in addition to homeschooling the kids, in addition to working full time uh, at a university, um, I also just uh, wrote a book and it, it's going to be, it's on pre-launch right now on Kickstarter. And then it's going to be available on Amazon and in some bookstores in a few in a few months once the Kickstarter is done and all that kind of stuff. And so having the time to navigate, you know, not just writing and going to writers conferences and, you know, all that kind of stuff, but also coordinating with illustrators and editors and all that sort of stuff. I really needed to make sure I was organized, particularly because I think it was important to make sure that yes, I'm doing those things, but I'm also still fully mom fully wife, you know, got to do that wife thing right now. And just me having, you know, me time. And so having to balance all of that, that impacts 
our need to really be organized. And so we have, you know, done some different things with organization and they're going to be using Kanban boards for their daily organization as well, because this is going to be the first time that we're navigating not only outside courses online and with various deadlines, but now we're going to have college courses on top of that. And we're going to have volunteering because Faster Fox has been uh, asked to volunteer well, she wanted to, like she, she was, she was glad to have the opportunity to volunteer, um, with the Astronomical Society and with a planetarium and then Speedster has his volunteer work with some robotics teams and um, Salamander is going to be, you know, so, so we are navigating in a lot of different spaces and they're still kids. They like, we still do play dates <laughs> because they're still kids and they spend time with their friends and they're hanging out with their friends and all that other sort of stuff. And so in order to make sure that nothing, you know, falls down, I get to do what I love, which is plan. I know y'all, y'all, y'all know by now I love planning. I've planted four year increments. So that's been really cool. So some of the videos that I do have planned for you guys Coming up is really, I would love to, if you would like, if you're interested, do a video on the engineering program that uh, Speedster is in, uh, do a video reviewing the math courses that they're doing, and just talking about, you know, how we're navigating high school and, you know, middle school, and you guys can let me know in the comments if there's some other topics that you have an interest in that you would like to see. But for now, I just want to say that I have missed you guys. <laughs> I've missed being able to do videos for you guys, but it was there were just not enough hours in the day. Um, I would love to do more videos, do more updates and stuff like that. But I am not going to overcommit. So I am not going to sit here and say, I'm going to do a video every week. I'm not even going to tell y'all I'm going to do a video every month because y'all ain't going to give me a line. But I will definitely uh, try to update more than every three years. So bye-bye for now. Um, it was great talking to you guys. See you soon.